All right, how's it going? Uh, today's video is going to be kind of just looking at the editor, seeing how certain things have been rolled out uh, in UE5 main, just kind of looking at some of that experimental stuff. Uh, I do want to say anything that I do show is probably subject to change uh, quite a bit. I will be looking at some of the things that uh, probably won't change as much as other things, but I want to make this kind of like a regular little thing where we kind of just look at how the engine's progressing and kind of like we did with the modeling tools, and I want to just take a look at uh, the new features coming to the engine, or at least being made at the moment. They might not make their way. Uh, so one big thing that I'm not going to be covering is there's some new mass plugins uh, that handle AI and navigation, uh, and that was recently added, as well as the virtual shadow map. Uh, they were having an issue. If you were on the main branch, uh, you should be able to update now and see that they are fully usable. But today, I want to talk about a couple new things that I've noticed. These aren't necessarily new changes, but just changes since early access and from... Okay, so the first thing I want to take a look at is up here, uh, we now have a select button and an after button. The select button, now both these buttons somewhat have an overlap with right clicking a mesh, as these are some of the options that this is going to show you. Uh, but this expands on some of those ideas uh, by type of action. It's not necessarily for just the mesh or after you have selected. Uh, we can use it with what we have selected. So it exposes certain things like focus on your selected. Uh, but we can also now focus on each thing that is the same class of what we have selected. So like if we selected this breakable stone, Stone, went here we can select all breakable stone but it does have this nice shortcut in here now called for light and it is select relative lights what this means is it's going to get the bounds of your selection and any lights relevant to that are going to be selected instead so now if you're working on a house whatever or just with a volume, you can use this selection tool uh, to select all the lights. You can just select all the lights in the level if you wanted. Uh, that might slow things down. Uh, so it also has select stationary lights exceeding overlap. So that means any stationary light that has more than, I believe it's three overlapping. Uh, it has some selection rules for if you're working with HLOD clusters. So it's selections based on like certain criteria that will just speed up workflows for certain people. So we also now have this actor window, as I said. This exposes quite a few things. We can create a level instance, and that's what mainly it's for, is creating a level instance. Uh, we can see the actor history, uh, change certain attributes of the actor, like like we can on right click, but we can make it where we convert it to a static mesh or lightweight instance, which is the new like, lightweight actor class. Uh, something else I wanted to cover is I did not include this in the video that I made last week, but if we go to modeling, uh, one very useful tool that is coming, especially with Nanite, uh, there's a bake to vertex. Basically, you'll be able to uh, control per channel what you assign. Like we can have it on channel on the R, we uh, assign an ambient inclusion, then curvature, etc. If we bake to the color channel, you can actually bake a normal map onto here and other information. Uh, the one thing that I do find uh, inconvenient at the t at the moment is if you do something like that, it resets the attribute of the mesh, so it would not have the correct hard edges. But you can see this would be useful, like say you're wanting to bake in uh, curvature data to use in your materials. So like I could use this curvature data, like I, I use curvature data personally on these rocks to add a certain texture. Uh, so we could use that same thing. So we could actually use this curvature and say, you know, where it's black, low, or do, be this color. Uh, and they do have a little bit of control. Uh, at the moment, I would probably say try to bake this information outside of the editor. But this is a really good start. And you could actually use this as a base and then go uh, outside of the editor to fix it, right? Uh, and because it does have a lot of control. So we can also do positional data. Uh, so it's a lot of stuff that you normally would bake out onto like a texture. You could actually do in here and then play with it in materials, which is really useful since you could be dynamically creating meshes in here as well. So we can use that to our advantage where, you know, we're only making meshes in here or we're making our block out meshes in here. We can even make just playable meshes in here and have it where at the end of the day, we bake the data using this tool so that our, we don't even have to export it out of the engine. And you can see we actually edited the, the things to flip it on accident because uh, the curvature data saved black and white. Um, so one of the things I really wanted to cover is A, the plugins. 
uh, window got a new UI update. It looks great, in my opinion. Uh, I do wish that we could sort by beta or experimental now that they're tagged actively as beta. Um, but one thing I wanted to talk about is there is now a plugin. It is called the Geometry Scripting plugin, right? It's marked as experimental. It's very early. Uh, at the moment, uh, what this does is it exposes these procedural generation tools uh, to Blueprint. So let me show you what I mean by that. Let's actually, we're going to go to a blank level. Okay, so these are some buttons I have. Just as a simple thing, we're going to just add a button. I'll walk you guys through this. We now have this button. We're going to call say just create mesh, right? Right. And then just call this create box. So on click, create a box. Okay, so on clicked. Oh, on pressed also works. So we're going to spawn a dynamic mesh actor. Uh, for transform, we're just going to set to zero for now. And then from here, uh, since I have that plugin enabled, uh, you can actually see we're going to be doing something relatively easy, which is just spawning a mesh. Uh, but I hope that it gives you an idea of what we'll be able to do. If you've used the modeling tools, that's what you can do. We have access to the voxel tools. We have access to the basically every single tool. Uh, at the moment, none of this is marked editor only, and we can do it in a, uh, like we could hit play and have it be doing all of these, and I hope that's how it stays, which would mean we could create dynamic meshes at runtime using this tool, which I assume is what their plan is to do. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to append a box. All we got to do, right, this 100% probably isn't the proper way to do this. This is just how I'm going to do it to make it work. Um, okay, so now, compile that. We shouldn't have any errors that are associated with this. That has to do with the fact that these other things have been changed. So what this is going to do, this is just going to create a 100 by 100 box at origin. This is on origin, so we're going to move it down. Uh, let's run this editor utility widget and just hit create box, right? So now we have this box. This box is a, is a dynamic actor. Uh, now imagine if I did some other calls on this, right? So we could do, right? So now, what if I then did, and let's apply a mesh boolean. We're going to spawn a second one. And then it's transform, or here, it's dimensions, will be 50 by 50, okay? Let's hit that. And you can see this is now on here. Bam, we've got our thing. Now it did cre it did leave this mesh, so we could delete that target mesh that we made. This is obviously hacky, but we can do the same thing in the level blueprint so that we could do this real time. Say we need to cut a uh, windows out of a wall, we could use this to do it and have it where we actually have those meshes saved out. Play, and you'll see that it still got created. Uh, it was dynamically created and done. Also, they added red to the exit. I love it. Okay, so now every time I play, it's going to do these operations. Let's subtract uh, there. Create a box. Oh, oh, I didn't hit compile. Uh, uh, either way, I wanted people to have an idea of what these tools are capable of. Uh, so we could actually uh, make like preset buttons to say, you know, make our own presets that we use for modeling in here uh, so that we can kind of get a speed up if we wanted. Uh, I mean, to me, the possibilities are endless with this because it really is some procedural modeling that you could do within Blueprints and you kind of have access to all of the tools, right? Um, so like, I'm excited to see what happens when A, these are finished, but also what people do with them. And if you think about like actually adding this into gameplay where we could have outside actors affecting the data we're feeding into this, we could have it where your players model custom walls to custom cars to whatever you kind of simplify it down to. Uh, we can also start from a base rather than nothing. Like right here, I'm kind of hacking this together, obviously, and starting based on just a empty dynamic mesh that I'm then appending a box to. If we started with a, a actual mesh, uh, these these tools could be more useful, right? We could have it where we have a little more planning going on in there. Um, and the cool thing is you can UV, you can set mesh, you can set uh, material IDs, all this stuff. 
anyways, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Uh, I think I'm going to make this more regular video content that I create. Um, there's a lot of other little things I can go over. But at the moment, I tried to cover the stuff I think that's going to make the most difference in kind of like artist life and uh, the people I deal with um, overall. So I hope this was helpful. Obviously, none of this stuff is finished. And I can't wait, though, for everyone to get their hands on it. I know not everyone's using the UE5 main branch or uh, the Git branch in general. Uh, and they're kind of waiting for UE5 to release. So I hope uh, making these videos, you guys can appreciate some of the stuff and kind of get a head start on uh, learning this and seeing what is coming. Uh, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Uh, I hope this was helpful. And yeah.